Hello everyone. In the previous week, we have talked about how can we create a web API using PHP. And we have created this web API, which need a name as parameter. So if we need to get any item detail, just write the name of this item detail, something like Pepsi, for example. And we are going to got the name, price, a category, voto, and so on. Now, how can we call this API from Android? At first, let's go here and write something like Android Volley Library. It is one of the best libraries which used to call a web API from Android application. So if we go here and click here on Volley Overview, then go down here and we will get the dependency library for the web API of Volley. So just copy this line, go to the Android Studio. Let's go here to the Gradle script and in the build Gradle, just add this library and click on sync now. And this process will download the Volley library to your Android app. Now, after this step, just go here. And as you can see here, the URL of this website start with localhost. Of course, you cannot call any web API from Android using the localhost keyword. Instead of that, you should got your IP address. So just go here, start CMD to open your command prompt. And in the command prompt, just write IP config and press enter. Now, as you can see here, we have got this IP address, which is 192, it is IB4 address, of course, 192.168.8100. So if I replace 192.168.8.100 instead of localhost, I have got the same result. So I need this URL, so just copy this URL, and let's go here to our Android application. Let's close this Gradle script. And here, let's start with this text, plain text. We are going to add some lines because we are going to use the constraint layout. So I have added edit text and under or below this edit text, I'm going to add a button. Okay, now I'm going to call this edit text, for example, something like, for example, search underscore et or search edit text. And yes. And let's remove this text. And the button, I'm going to call it, for example, search underscore btn. And let's add some text like search. And in this example, it's supposed that you will pass the name of the item and you will get, for example, the price and the category of this item. So in this case, I'm going to draw two text view. This is my first text view. Let's call this text view as search underscore price and another text view for the category. And let's call this one, for example, search underscore cat. Okay, so the design is ready. Now let's go to the Kotlin. And here, we'll start, of course, with search underscore btn dot set on a click listener to define the click listener of the button. Now, after we have defined, how can we call the web API? At first, you should start with var 
URL of data type string equal and here paste the URL which you have got from the web API. And of course here, instead of Pepsi, I'm going to add plus search et dot text dot to string which means I'm going to call this API and the parameter name will be entered through the edit text which have been drawn at the first of this video. Now, after that, I'm going to create a request queue var rq equal volley dot new request queue thus the request queue is used to call the web API from the URL then we should define the data type or the type of the request we are going to call in this example we have got a JSON object if you don't have any idea about JSON object or what's the difference between JSON object and JSON array you can review my video which talk about introduction about web API and JSON now var sr equal string request and let's pass this for parameter which is request <coughs> dot method dot get why because as you remember in the previous video when I create my PHP file, I have called the name using the get method. Okay, the get is faster, but the post is more secure. Then I'm going to use the URL. Then I don't need to send any JSON object. Now, the response listener. The response listener here means what you are going to do when you got the result. The response listener means what you are going to do when you got the result and at the opposite we have also response dot error listener which means what you are going to do if you have any error in this example but let's again call the response response dot listener Yes, and here, sorry, it is not string, it is JSON object request. Now everything is ready. Everything is ready. The last step is rq.addsr, which connect your request type for this variable, which is sr with the request queue. Now here in the response listener, let's make some space here, and here in the response listener, how can we get the result? The result which come from this PHP file, which has ID, name, price, and category, will store inside a variable called response. This variable response is storing the result which come from the API. Now, I'm going to write something like search price dot text equal response dot get string price the same thing will be now with the category so search category dot text equal response dot get string and here category now the price which will come from the api will be shown on this text view and the same thing will the category so let's test the example now run and click on ok okay as you can see here we have got the result let's try with Pepsi for example and click on search as you can see here yes we have got the price and the category of this item now if we go to the database which has been created previously for our items. So go to the PHMI admin, click on go. And here is my database and this is my table, which is items. As you can see here, 
Let's try with this item, which is margarita pizza, for example. I have tried with Pepsi and everything was okay. Now, let's try with, for example, margarita pizza. Okay. Margarita pizza and click on search. As you can see here, we don't have got any result. Why? Because Margarita pizza have space and the web don't accept space. So how can we resolve this issue? That's what we are going to talk about in the next week, inshallah. So see you in the next week.